Two things that most people tend to get wrong or just not even think about when they're on the range is breathing and trigger finger position or what part of the trigger finger are you contacting the trigger with. These are two things that are probably the easiest to overlook and the easiest to forget. Because of that, most people don't even work on them at all. And that's just a cry in shame. I'm going to help you guys to understand these and give you a few things to work on so you can really go, go back and increase your sharpshooting abilities. I'm Jordy Buck and this is Michigan Sharpshooters, helping you become well regulated so together we can preserve our freedoms. The first point that I'm going to talk about is your trigger finger position. Where on the trigger finger do you put your trigger contact? Well, it's a little different for each person and it's a little different for each gun, but I'll tell you the approximate. Right there. See it? That line. That's right in the middle between the tip of my finger and the knuckle. Right there. Right in the, that's the approximate. Now that has a variance of about a quarter inch above and a quarter inch below. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color this whole area here nice and dark. Approximately there. That's the middle and then up or down for not quite a quarter inch. Maybe about an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths inch up and down both sides of the middle. That's the approximate. Now, what you need to do is start exactly in the middle. And you can adjust one way or the other depending on what works best for your hand, your wrist, and your gun to pull that trigger totally straight and not torque the rifle to the left or the right at all while you're shooting. So go ahead and do this next time you're going out shooting. Take an actual measurement of your trigger finger from the knuckle to the tip of your finger. Or just take a really good eyeball and put a dot right in the middle where it looks like the middle is. Now go ahead and make that dot a line all the way across. Use that on the trigger. Take that line and put it right in the middle of your trigger. Mm -hmm. Right there. All right, three basic points on your finger that you're going to use for trigger contact. Start right in the middle, try that, dry fire quite a bit, shoot a bit like that, shoot a few good groups, the best you can. Then try it with that little line, i going to make it again, that little line across the middle of your finger. I used a dry erase, you might want to use a permanent marker, it'll only last a few days, but the dry erase comes off quick on the trigger. Anyway, put that line right in the middle of your trigger, dry fire quite a bit, and then fire a few groups the best you can. And then put that line right on the left side of your trigger, do the same, and then try it right on the right side of your trigger and do the same. Whatever gives you the most consistent results is going to be what's pulling the trigger the straightest back with the least amount of left or right side force on that trigger. And that's where you're going to go with. So once you've established that trigger finger position, now you can work on the rest of the things. You can try to keep that the same every time now that you figured out what's good. And then you can work on your timing and your breath cycle, which are the next two parts we're going to talk about here. Your timing. Your timing is the time frame on when you pull the trigger. And it looks something like this. Did you see it? Probably not. I'm going to put it on my whiteboard. All right. This is my chart. I have two spots. The start and the end. Figures, right? My pressure scale is up and down. My time scale is side to side. Just to kind of give you an idea. First up is when I first make contact on that trigger. That's my start. Known as the shot start. And my shot is the end. That's just shot. Shot end, just shot. So when I first touch the trigger, let me start right here. Immediately, because I'm preparing to take this shot now, 
my trigger takes up the first and my trigger finger takes up the first initial slack. So immediately, in a very short time, far far less than a quarter second, I'm going to take all of the time, all of that loose space right up on my trigger. That's basically as soon as my finger touches the trigger in this time frame right here, this quick. And touch the trigger, touch the trigger. That quick. It's going to go from like a boulder line, so you can see it if I can, like this. And bam, instantly, quite high. Now I've got my initial trigger take up and the amount of pressure needed, which depends on your trigger. Okay, so I'm applying pressure upward. That's my shot start. Start here and bam, I've started the shooting process, the process to make my shot. Now I hold this position for as long as it takes me to get my precision aiming. Get the sights lined up perfect, perfect sight picture. Now, I am going to make this shot. So I am going to take up the rest of that slack, go through the break or the shot, and then can, the trigger movement continues just a hair past that. This is the trigger pull, what it should look like more or less. The full time at the most from start to trigger break is about eight seconds. Some of the Olympic shooters can go longer than that, but that becomes a very big skill because after about the five second mark, your body starts to tense up and you start to shake a little. And that's because during this process, you're holding your breath. So you don't want to do that long. Your chest tightens up after about five seconds of holding your breath. It takes a lot of work to get past that. Now, breathing. Here's the breathing technique that I want you guys to get down. I'm going to do one deep breath. Oh, calm down. A half breath. All the way out again. Touch the trigger. Trigger break. Just like that. I'm going to show you with my rifle. Alright, a full breath all the way in and all the way out. Alright. Half breath in, all the way out. I'm all the way out, touch the trigger, first initial take up, line up precision aiming, take the shot. Just like that. There's the chart. If you can follow this, then you're doing pretty good. Alright, prepare, calm down, get ready. You're going to take a deep breath all the way in. All the way out naturally. Let your whole body relax, your chest relax at the bottom of your breath. Maybe a half second pause. A half breath in. All the way out at a natural pace. Let your chest relax at the end. As soon as your chest relaxes at the end of that last breath. All the way out, relax your chest. Touch your trigger. Now you're starting the shot. You've done your shot start. Touch the trigger, take up the first initial slack in that trigger. Do the precision aiming for the next few seconds as well as you can. The second your sights are perfect, continue holding your breath. The second your sights are perfect, pull that trigger with more pressure to break it over, firing the shot. Hold for one to two seconds. I prefer two seconds. And then let out that breath. Take a breath, let it out. Okay. Once you get up through that shot break, you're going to continue holding your breath for two more seconds. Two seconds is a good one for this follow through. Deep breath in, deep breath out. That is your timing of breath cycle and trigger pull. And this is important. This is more tailored for a marksmanship, precision shooting, or sharp shooting than it is for more your tactical combat shooting. But the techniques that you're naturally going to acquire in shooting and the natural abilities you'll acquire from following this chart will help you in every other arena of shooting, be that your home defense training, your CPL style training, tactical rifle work, whatever you're doing, this will help you. So your breathing technique, you're going to be doing what we call diaphragmatic breathing. That means breathing from your diaphragm. I do this naturally 
because of my training in martial arts. And honestly, I picked this up from my six years that I spent playing in a brass band where we had to learn to take lots of deep breaths full of lots of air and hold it for quite some time. Take another really deep breath really quick. So this is something I don't struggle with at all, but a lot of people do. Diaphragmatic breathing, breathing with your diaphragm instead of breathing with your chest. Now, it's a kind of a quirky thing to practice, but what you have to do is breathe so that your chest isn't what's moving up and down. Your chest is going to swell as you breathe in air, but what's moving more is your, your abdomen or your belly. You know you're doing diaphragmic breathing when if you can put your hand on your belly, as you exhale, your abdomen tenses up. You can feel those muscles tense. You might start to feel a few little ab lines in there as you exhale even. So put your hand on your belly. Inhale, exhale. You want to feel your abdomen kind of suck in and get tense and tight as you exhale. As you inhale, your abdomen should loosen up and relax as your diaphragm is expanding. That type of breathing actually works on a neurological level to stimulate the calming nerves in your body. It calms your nerves, relaxes your whole body when you work on that diaphragmatic breathing. You also get a deeper breath, which lets you hold your breath longer, and you get to clear out more of the carbon dioxide at once into your lungs because diaphragmatic breathing causes twice as much influx and exhaust through your lungs as your shallow chest breathing does. So that's the breathing you need to have because you get more oxygen at once and because it calms you down. Just remember folks, this is stuff you actually need to not just watch, but practice. If you don't practice it, you can't perform. If you don't practice, you can't perform. You need to take this home, all these points that I've been showing you, and just work on them when you're not even at the range, not even shooting, not loading your gun and firing. Work on these points of fundamentals so that they become natural and easy. Once they become easy, they'll become natural, and then you can do them every time properly. And once you can do all these small fundamental points every time properly, and the same way every time, now you can work on points of your high degree marksmanship and sharpshooting, and you will suddenly be able to outclass a lot of other people at the range. Well, thanks for watching Michigan Sharpshooters today. I hope you found this insightful. Don't forget to click the like button and look around for more of my new videos. Well, thanks guys. I'll see you later and good luck sharpshooting.